my name is Derek Day from Classless Act, and I'm here to show you some guitar techniques to help you spice up your blues solos a little bit. Maybe sprinkle some paprika. And for the real ones out there, I know you got hot sauce in that bag. Let's use it. I've been playing guitar for roughly 20 years. My heart, soul, and specialty lies within the blues. The key word here is unpredictability, shock value, ear bending, and head turning. Let's start with the basics. The most popular scale in blues soloing is the minor pentatonic. I'm sure you know that one already. Let's do it in the key of B for blues. <laughs> point is to make the notes sound special. So with that, I'd like to extrapolate on two techniques and one concept, bending, vibrato, and outside elements. With vibrato, for instance, some players like to go moderate speed. Some players like to go nice and slow. Some players like to go real fast. I say master all three. You put them in a wave, then in slow motion, then you shake them. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. I'm just saying mess around with different voicings so you have more ways to express yourself. We tend to limit ourselves to bending up to the one, or up to the five. But don't forget, you have things like the four, or the three, or the seven. In other words, okay, I hear you. Ooh, say that again. Ooh, I felt that. I'm just saying, have some fun with your bending. Try different fingers for each note, or bend up to the same note from different places. Well, that seven note. That's a half step bend. Now try a whole and a half. It's a different vibe. Finally, I'd like to talk to you about the concept of outside elements. The first physical way is to break out with your hands of this pentatonic box. I played it earlier. That's the sped up version. How do we break out of that pentatonic box? By creating more boxes, more shapes, up and down the fretboard. This way you create a familiarity that helps you venture more courageously. A lot of you already may know the trick of flipping these four frets the other direction. That way you'll get the major pentatonic scale. Now you have a whole new set of notes to add to your soloing. Personally, I like to add a high major third at the end of a blues phrase. Keep expanding. Find all the shapes that contain notes from the major and minor pentatonic scale. So you have... You also have... There's a very famous triangle shape. Comes right after the box. Keep going, you'll have a major triangle shape. But don't be afraid to create your own shapes within these shapes. That's right, I said it. I go against all theory, all I say. Doing so creates originality. Get a little mix and match there. A good way to find all these shapes is to locate the root note all across the board. In this case, we're in the key of B, so find all your Bs. Probably like one or two more. Anyway, you could move things from here to down here within the same phrase. <laughs> That's the more physical take on using outside elements, but there's more conceptual aspects to it. Take the most general idea you have of another genre and implement it into your blues solo. It adds dimension. Thrash metal, which I know that genre to be very heavy, fast, mean, and nasty tones, vicious. So it would kind of be like... <laughs> Uh -huh. 
But that wouldn't really work in the middle of a blues solo. What you can do is take that energy and take that vibe, throw it into one of your blues licks. example just for the heck of it waltz waltzing around the ballroom and the waltz is usually in 3-4 but again you could take its vibe and put it in a blues lick it's very staccato playful lighthearted, bouncy makes you want to move your feet a little bit amidst the blues solo <laughs> Now imagine throwing some thrash influence in there. 